Hello and welcome to Meridian 6, a brand new channel where I'll be uploading some stuff to do with my uh, ongoing comics and games creations. Um, I thought I'd kick off with something kind of old. Uh, there's a different channel for this project, but I did work on a game under the Meridian 6 banner called Bishop Chapter, which was a mist-inspired um, puzzle game. Needs a lot of polish, but it is what it is. I spent maybe about five months on it in total. Uh, it's up for download if you want to play it, but it's been whew, how long? Like a year and a half since I actually last looked at it. Um, as soon as the deadline came and went, I was done with it, absolutely. Um, so I thought it'd be cool to start off the new channel with, uh, as you can see, the return to Bishop Chapter, where I'm going to play the game again and just talk about some things I remember and see if there's anything that I forgot. It's not been that long, but, you know, you never know. Anyway, uh, let's jump straight in. So this is my itch.io page where you'll find the game up for download. It's just downloading in the background now, but um, you can see it looks like this. I'll put a link somewhere. Uh, depends how you're watching this. Might be in the description, might be in the bio. Yes, yeah, so you can see um, it's just there. That's what the page looks like. It's got the trailers, some images, and there should be a download button right at the top as well that you can just click. Um, if not, it's down the bottom. But yeah, uh, let's install it and jump right in. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> there she is, the menu. The familiar old tune. Build zero point one. I forgot about this. Anyway, yeah, so it's been 17 months since I last went near this game. I've been meaning to do a return to for a while just to uh, check in and if even just to kickstart this channel with some stuff, you know. Um, if you're watching this on the Bishop Chapter channel, there are links in the description for the new channel, Meridian 6. And if you're watching this on Meridian 6, then there are links in the description for checking out the development process of Bishop Chapter back when I was working on it, as well as some uh, in-depth, insightful stuff. But the idea today is just uh, I'm going to sit down, blast through it as much as I can. Um, I'm pretty sure I remember it, all of it. Maybe I'll get stuck a few times, we'll see. Anyway. Okay. Oof. It's a little bit buggy. Or choppy, rather. Huh. Okay, so yeah, we start off in the cell. All we can see is the puzzle. That we have to complete to get out of here. I'm hoping it smooths out once I leave this room because it is the most detailed room in the game at the moment. I say at the moment, I'm not going back to it, just so you know. But yeah, so we've got this wall panel here that you can just about make out if you look around. Door status locked. And then we've got a bunch of buttons here that when pressed. They release little marbles. The idea being that you have to balance the scales to open the door. 
So you've got seven balls in which to achieve balance. Uh, and you can see that from each one it does pause movement for a sec. So when a ball drops in, the number on the right goes down by one, the number on the left goes down by a arbitrary amount. And then this one on the far left here uh, just resets the puzzle back to seven. So from what I remember, I've got to press that, press that, press that. that again fifteen point five okay this puzzle used to be second nature to me but we'll see what happens now as soon as I find that 15.5, we'll be fine. No. That's it. Okay. Reset. So this. That this, that, <laughs> that should be it, sweet, so now you press the final button, And you are free. Free as a bird. Okay. Good thing I remembered that, otherwise I would have been stuck there for a while. Right, light switch. My god, it's so choppy with OBS running. It's so annoying. So I put a lot of effort into this room, as you can see. It is the most fully textured and realized room in the game. I guess the idea would be for the entire map to look like this for a finished game, but you know, I didn't have time to do that. I barely had time to do this one, so... Um. But the idea with this game was that I was heavily inspired by Myst by Cyan Games, um, and there's a lot of environmental storytelling in that company's games that I wanted to kind of emulate here. Uh, it's a lot of uh, looking at visual clues, taking notes, finding things that don't make sense at the time, but that maybe you think of later when they become relevant. Um, yeah, it's a lot of cool stuff. Um, it's one of the things I had to implement that took me ages was um, rotatable documents. It's a shipping invoice for... Uh, 5,000 balls of various materials for the ball puzzle. Oh god, I never quite figured out the um, the rotation physics. Cool. So that's that. Torch or flashlight. Press F to toggle. Cool. It is possible to just not pick that up and try and do the game without it, but things get very dark. And then here we have the first trophy. It's the Anubis trophy. So that's the one you get for completing this puzzle. Each puzzle in the game has a trophy that you collect at the end of completing it. And then if you look down here as well, we have a little chess piece. It's a bishop. And that can be placed on this board. Um, another thing that took me a while to implement was the opening and closing drawers 
and cupboards. T38. That's a visual clue for a later puzzle. Um, you wouldn't have to remember any of these details, it'd be a case of um, writing them down and then you'd always have them on hand. Uh, the thing with the missed games uh, is that you knew you had to take notes after a while of getting used to the playstyle. Um, so you'd make a lot of notes that were maybe useless, but in amongst those, so long as you were quite thorough, you'd actually have the notes you needed. So. Um, I kind of wanted to emulate that a bit, so maybe someone who was coming into this game from having experienced Mist would have made a note of some of the, the numbers on this document, even though they, they're not really relevant, or they would have made a note of BC, even though that's not really relevant, but yeah. And then maybe even drawn this, even though that's not relevant. Um, the idea with the chessboard is that you'd have a whole range of pieces hidden around the map that you could collect and you bring them back to the board and place them and when they're all placed I think you just unlock some concept art or something I don't know and then another collectible were these comic pages and there would have been about 30 of those in the in the whole game and there would have been a separate section of the map where you could assemble them on a stone and it's kind of like a secret puzzle where you had to order them in the the order that the story would make sense um, and by proxy then you unlock the first issue of the comic I was working on at the time that I'm still working on at the moment because I keep juggling so many different projects uh, it will get there, it will get there I'm still very eager to finish it that comic's called Black Mist, by the way. Um, available in Remnants on my main site, meridian6.co. Anyway, we'll get to that. So this operates this swing door, which is occasionally buggy, but it's worked this time. And that basically gives you access to the full map and also triggers the opening tiles, but first we're going to go and have a look at yeah, see, that's what I mean I don't know where it is, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't there we go I regret not making a run feature on this because um, it's just such slow going. And this is the pedestal where you can put your found trophies as well as uh, a handle which at the moment does absolutely nothing. My little finger's holding shift or control like I want to run. Uh, we've got this thing here as well. This is one of those things again that you have no context for it, so it doesn't make sense right now, but maybe you take a note of the symbols for later on, who knows. Anyway, let's uh, start the game. Is pause. Yeah, there's a little bar at the top here that you can see where um, it bugs a little bit. <laughs> he 
each time you press it's in a different spot. Oh wow, if you look up it moves down. So if I look down... There we go. Really weird, I don't know why it does that. So yeah, you've got resume, inventory, so we have the bishop chess piece that we collected. I is inventory, interesting. Gallery is locked. Pages not available. Then of course you've got quit to menu and then up top you get the menu looking just right. We have this um, <coughs> clickable bishop chess piece and that lets you input codes which I can't remember any of but they would have essentially unlocked it was a kind of a, a debugging thing for me um, it's a quick way to unlock the full inventory full gallery just for uh, bug testing purposes so here we are again bishop chapter nice visual clues on the stairs as well. If you've looked into the channel, the development process, you know what these are about. Um, it's a good example of one actually around the corner here. <coughs> this is the pipe puzzle. Quite misty in vibe. I'm quite happy about that. And if I recall, down here there's another uh, button pad similar to the one that we saw in the main room. Yeah. Different symbols on this one that you can see better if you keep it on the, what's it, the penumbra of the torchlight. <coughs> Very moody, isn't it? I've also taken the liberty of getting all these solutions to the more convoluted puzzles on the screen for me to reference because, well, call it cheating if you want, but I programmed these levels, so I think I've earned it. So we'll just go around the map and sort everything out. I really wish I put a run function in here because this is so slow. It's one of the things I regret. Anyway, right. So this is actually correct already. So this puzzle is as simple as taking a note of these symbols on the stairs. So there's a few staircases in the map. Each staircase will have the same set of symbols on them. And the idea is that if the player is stuck on these pipes, eventually they will see these and recognize that they are the same symbols. So there are eight symbols corresponding to eight pipes but there are eight other symbols that are not on the stairs. This is one of them. So the idea is that you point the gear to the symbol that appears on the stairs. Uh, the pairs are always one that doesn't and one that does. And then you turn the valve and lock that in. And you have to find all eight of these pipes and point at the correct symbol that appears on the stairs and turn the valve. That will allow you to complete a puzzle by the lake, which involves turning uh, water filter tanker on. 
and that allows you to drain the lake and to fish up some keys. So this one is the bottom right. I'll explain these when we get to Aten, which is at the very north of, of the map, way over there. If you want a more in-depth breakdown, I suggest looking at the Bishop Chapter channel where there are development videos on each of the puzzles as well as loads of the mechanics and also some commentaries by myself on the thought process b behind them. Um, this is already correct. Great. So these buttons correspond to north, south, east, west on the directions that some uh, light projectors are pointing in a room. I think this could have looked really good when it was fully textured. This in here would have been a car garage workshop um, with tools and stuff, cars suspended on jacks and whatever. And here is another pipe. So this symbol is already correct. You just need to turn the valve to lock it in. So that's two of eight. Weird like glitches. <coughs> so the visual themes of this map when I started the project was a mix of three things ancient Egypt uh, industrial and American suburbia and it's kind of a blend of all three uh, because the, in the, the story in the Meridian 6 comic. This place is, well, its counterpart in the real world, not in the Egyptian Duat limbo, but its actual counterpart is uh, an old industrial site taken over by a criminal organization and they've made it their living space. They've renovated a bunch of it, they've planted trees, they've got a lake, they've got some fences, they've put in these lamp posts, they've paved the roads, and they basically all live there. But on paper it is an industrial site. And then Ancient Egypt ties in heavily with the story as well, lots of themes there. Um, got a mailbox here. So I'm not sure why I made it that you could move the flags. Um, I guess it just makes sense that you can do that. I don't know what I was going for with it. But you can uh, check the mail. E510. That's like the T38 we found on the notepad in the Anubis room. So that's the second of nine clues pertaining to the Thoth book puzzle. I've got those on my other screen. Otherwise I would be noting these down. Just going to go in here and fill in the next uh, projector puzzle button. the slowest possible pace of all time. Okay, that's that one. This ideally would have been furnished with lots of stuff. Uh, if I ever made this with a team into a full puzzle game then there would have been a lot more puzzles and a lot more things to interact with. But as it stood I could only include six. 
which I still think is pretty good going for the time scale I had. Uh, it was supposed to be a two or three month project, but it got extended due to COVID, and I ended up working on it full time for about five months. Which is pretty good going. I basically lived and breathed this project. When I wasn't working on it, I was thinking about it. It's quite unhealthy, really, but you know, that's how I get stuff done. I'm hoping to get back to that with um, the projects I'm working on now, which I will talk about in a future video. Um, but essentially, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a comic series tying in with another game. Very different vibe with that game. We'll see how that goes. Very excited about it. I just need to get my brain on the same page as it was when I was making Bishop Chapter. So that I can actually uh, knuckle down full time and just knock it out. This is top left. If I had time to model any cars, they would have been here as well. You could search the cars. Uh, each car would have belonged to a character in the story. It's just too much work in the end. Like, the essentials of the project were the mechanics and making a full playable game. The, uh, the polish wasn't really essential. And this one's the top right. There is an item in this game called the King Ring, which again ties into the comic storyline. But uh, essentially when you get it, you can place beacons and teleport to them from anywhere on the map. And they make traversing big distances like this a lot easier. However, you do need to get to the place first to place the beacon and then get far enough away and then need to go back there. <coughs> I mean, there would have maybe been more warranted use for it in a wider, bigger project like this, but I'll show you what I mean when I get it. have to excuse these uh, silent moments where I'm just walking. Uh, I don't really have much to say about this area. That's the Aten Tower. Aten being uh, the sun disk in ancient Egyptian mythology. There was a heretic pharaoh called Akhenaten who was basically the first, one of the first monotheists in history, and he basically renounced the traditional Egyptian gods, and he was convinced that the sun disk was the one true god, the Aten. He also thought it was his father, but that was represented by a circle with loads of uh, sun rays coming off it. And the idea that I was going to adapt that into was a big power station pylon, and then there would have been wires. Uh, as you can see, so they would have come out of it, and they would have zipped to each of the consoles I've been pressing to show the player where they were. It was my way of adapting the ancient Egyptian theme to fit the more industrialized theme, but uh, I didn't get time to do that. But uh, I think I came up with an acronym for Aten. It's like Advanced Technology Something Network. But this uh, this tower is what powers the alien tech that these people are in possession of, which is uh, it includes the King Ring. So until this tower is linked up and switched on, you can't actually use the King Ring, even if you have it.
<clears throat> Could you go through here? Yes, you can. So there's another console here, and uh, so that's going to be the bottom left button. So yeah, there would have been a big cable coming down, either into the top of this tower or straight into the console, just to indicate where it was. Here is where you slot the king ring to power it up, and then it's deposited as a powered up form from there. Here we have symphony number F6-4, which is another clue for the book puzzle in the vein of T38E510. I don't think I talked about this in the development videos, but this is actually sheet music for the main theme from The, <laughs> the Mummy Returns which I thought would be quite a funny easter egg to put in. This building is the Thoth building, the library book puzzle, but first we have a noon pipe. So, this symbol is going to be the guy with the waves above him. <coughs> I won't input any stuff yet, or actually, no, I'd, I'll input the stuff that we have. Which is three things. So, there's like a scoreboard thing up here big button in the middle of the room and when the puzzle's complete a door in the corner will open. Did it just despawn? Did I see that right? Yeah, look at that on the far left. <laughs> the door despawns. Right, so we've got T38 E510. So this is arranged, each bookshelf is A, B, C, D, E. 5 would be the row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10 would be the book. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I've clicked that, <coughs> and the board has changed to. Geez, long table to reflect that one book has been selected. Uh, T38 So, <coughs> I think I put that it skips out I and O because they're too similar to one. There's a note that you can find that tells you that. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q R S T. <coughs> so T three eight this one. <coughs> and F six four. C D E F six and four. So that's three books selected, which is all the clues we have so far. Um, <coughs> we'll come back when we have the rest. Here is the only house in the game that I actually managed to model properly. And that's because it had to have some clues in there. So let's get the torch on. Stairs are not navigable. The 
there's a fireplace with a torched piece of paper. If you turn it around, it's got it's a note that someone tried to burn. Won't mind. I'll just lock up at eight and put a note up. It'll be fine. Looking forward to our picnic. See. And in the mailbox for this house, you can find a letter addressed to Nia, implying that Nia lives here, and she tried to dispose of a note from someone with the initial C. They were apparently meeting up for a picnic. More on that later. Hey, we've got another pipe. So this one is going to be with the eye. That is correct. Then we've got some cabinets. Can't open it because it's locked. <coughs> light glitch is really weird. I remember trying for a while to try and sort that out, but for some reason the shadows just ignore the walls and come straight through. So we've got a PC here. A newspaper, which cannot be picked up. And there's a post-it note. P311. Call about position, feed cat. Remember, L left spare locker key behind the locker. There we go. So we've got clues at the key location, as well as a new entry for our book puzzle. And on the computer screen here, you've got a breakdown of how to complete the noon puzzle for anyone who's struggled to figure it out. And then in this room, which is uh, it's a recreation of a room from one of the Meridian 6 Cold Reset comics. Uh, chapter 2, Disturbance during the montage when the, the cops are all training, getting to know each other, going about their their lives. Uh, there's a part where Amigo is infiltrating the Bishop Chapter base, hiding from his brother and the leader Joshua. And he hides in a cabinet that I didn't put in yet, which would be there. But he essentially hides in it and he watches them go over the plans for the bank heist. Oh, and that is the exact same image that I used in the comic as well. So we've got a letter here. I've almost nailed the library referencing system. We don't have enough room for all 26 letters, but I've made it work. The first shelf unit on your left when you enter is A, then it follows clockwise, B, C, D, etc. I've omitted the letters I and O because they look like 1 and 0. I was getting really confused. Then each row is numbered 1 through 6, and each book is numbered from left to right. So, this essentially tells you how to complete the Thoth puzzle, and also gives you yet another clue for it. Then this is the Egyptian board game Senate, which I modeled for promo of the game. I thought it'd be cool to put it in somewhere. 
And then in the little bin over here, you've got this crumpled note of someone called Roderick complaining about the water filter in the lake keeps getting blocked because things fall into the water and it's because Nia has been meeting someone there gives you a bit of background on the noon pipes and why they need twisting and recalibrating that's another clue to the puzzle of uh, Nia's little picnic <coughs> there would have been stairs coming down here with another floor, but you know, we move. And where is it? The locker. This one. So, there's a spare key behind the locker. Lo and behold, key found. You open the locker, B3 4. Yet another clue for the Thoth puzzle. I put a lot of effort into this tonight. Jeez. And then we come to the Aten building. Which contains the Aten puzzle which I've been pressing all the buttons for preemptively and it's got a note on the door on urgent business don't call me back soon Charlie nothing on the back so someone called Charlie has locked up on urgent business who else with the initial C has locked up recently to go for a picnic down here is a tucked away Aten console for which the button is the top left There's also a noon pipe all the way down the end of this. Oh, why do I do this? I'm very aware that anyone who stumbled across this or who was following the progress of Bishop Chapter while I was making it and then proceeded to download the game and try and play it, this is like the bane of everyone's ex existence I guess just the sheer amount of walking no run function I purposely put things so far apart if the game was a bit fuller if there was more stuff in the map then it'd be a bit more justified I'd still include a run though like this area here was going to be a hedge maze and a park okay right It's the arrow we want pointing down. So that's that pipe done. And then literally on the other side of this is another console, but we can only get there via the staircase over there. So I need to go all the way back, all the way down, back up. Talk amongst yourselves. Be here for a while. I had the sky as blue at first. Looked really nice, but didn't quite capture the afterlife limbo feel I was going for. This is a lot better. Like a blood red sky. A perpetually setting sun 
that doesn't move. Nodding off here. Uh, there are a few more puzzles to look at because we've still only got one trophy, but we are steadily working at the passive puzzles. So there's two, three, four, about three or four puzzles that are direct. You are in the area, you will do these puzzles now and then the rest are all passive, uh, spread around the map components. So, we are almost there, lots more walking. Uh, this stuff isn't um, randomly scattered. I'll show you the, the map room when we get inside the Aten building, but essentially that room basically tells you where all of these consoles are located, so it's not all random. There is method to the madness. Uh, this is going to be the top right. And you know what? I think that's all of the Aten consoles now. I think. Did I get all the noon pipes? One. No, there's one more noon pipe. I might attempt this puzzle while I'm here. So this is probably my favorite puzzle of the game. It's just very hard to play with OBS running because it's choppy and you need to be quick towards the end of the puzzle. So far OBS is being better than I'm used to, but we'll see what happens when this thing starts speeding up. Um, if I was playing without OBS running then this would be running pretty smooth be a bit jittery towards the end of the puzzle, but nothing uh, unmanageable. We're going to give it a go. Featuring very exciting music by one of the game's composers, Martin Voskanian. I'll put his info somewhere description or on the page somewhere. So, I've picked up a Ben Ben statue, and that only slots into one of these eight booths. So, ah, oh, there we go. It's a case of finding the right one. did have to get very good at this while I was testing it. So I have played this puzzle many times. Um, every time you put two in, the puzzle speeds up ever so slightly. go. So, we've just sped up a little bit. You can see how choppy it is. Like, it's choppy. It's as choppy for me as it is for you right now. And it's only about to get worse. God damn it. Right, 
So that's that one. I'm actually super proud of this puzzle, I'm not going to lie. This was going to be a really boring um, platform turning thing where you... It's like a several rings, like an outer ring, middle ring, inner ring. And you turn a gear or a lever and the lever operates... Ah, oh shit. And the lever operates um, one of the rings and you have to create the path that you want to take. But it's one of those things that you see in a lot of puzzle games where uh, the lever that operates the outer ring will also operate the inner ring. So like maybe it turns the outer ring twice, the inner ring turns the other direction once, but then there's a separate lever for the inner ring as well and it's a case of braining the whole thing to create the path that you want and then there would have been several points to get to so you would have had to come back and rearrange the rings to get to the next part and I thought that was pretty boring um, and then this idea of perpetually spinning platforming puzzle came to me while I was in the shower one day <laughs> I was trying to figure out how best to do the um, the original idea for it but uh, oh shit I ended up coming up with something better, which is pretty cool. What happened there? Ah, oh, damn it. I do these. Have I picked up anything? Honestly, I think I'm just mindlessly clicking all the booths. I don't really have a sculpture. There we go. Yeah, that was that's embarrassing. Sorry about that. I got caught up in talking about it. Ah damn it. I quite like standing on these uh, these rings because I wonder if the run function could have been the speed quite comfortably. Sorry, I'm just wasting time now. Bear with me. This is one of those puzzles where having the king ring comes in handy because you can place a beacon on that bridge and if you fall off you just press K and you teleport straight back up. Um, but you know, we're not going to take any shortcuts here, apart from having the answers on screen for the other puzzles. I did learn a lot from this game. Um, it's definitely got its flaws. It's got a lot of pluses as well. Right. Do I have a pyramid? Let me skip the double one. Try this. Yes. So choppy. But so thrilling at the same time. <laughs> the timing's not that tricky. But when it's like this, it's a little difficult. Right, two left. Which means this is the final uh, 
speed change right now. So this is the fastest it will go. You can already see that that's pretty wild. Ah. I wasn't meant to fall off this much. It, ideally, I was going to do it all first time. But you know, we don't live in a perfect world. So there's two more pyramids I've got to pick up. You can only pick up one at a time. So you pick one up, slot one in, pick one up, slot one in. Every time you slot in two, the speed changes, increases. When you slot in all eight, the doors over there open, revealing the trophy. So the last two pyramids I need are there. So I'm just going to ride this all the way around. If you have a shitty PC, this is probably a nightmare to play. Right. So one there, one there. Of course it's the wrong one, 50-50, and I get it wrong every time. Cool. And my last pyramid is there. don't know how I managed that, but there we go. Final pyramid achieved. Just need to get to the center. It is this one. Boom! Puzzle complete. Slows back down to a crawl. And we take a victory lap. over to the open doors. It's a really good song, isn't it? It's just a bit loud. Cool. Here we are. Again, this would have been a little um, workstation area if it was furnished. I noticed board with some pins, and pinned to the board is a playing card, interestingly enough. And if you turn around, it's an ace of spades with F12. Yet another Thoth code. And through here on the table is our second puzzle trophy. We did it. So drop off here now. While I'm in the area, I'm going to go and do the med jed puzzle. No, I'm not. Wrong building. There we go. Medjet is watching. So this is uh, an obscure figure in ancient Egyptian mythology with only like literally one, maybe two references ever. But because it was depicted as kind of a like a ghost with arms uh, and a stupid face. It became a bit of a meme, especially in uh, Asia, and I thought it'd be cool to theme a puzzle around him. <coughs> so, this got even more grating music if it's loud. Yeah. I'm going to crank this down. Right. 
So, it's a maze. Here is the map of the maze. This took absolutely ages to build, by the way. Uh, the trophy we want for the puzzle is in the cage, right in the center there. There's a few just things. This is a quote from the Book of the Dead where Medjay has actually mentioned one of the two references, I believe. And then I used that, just that quote, to theme this entire game around him. If you are spotted with a red gaze, I will reclaim what you hold. Do not rely on your sight when finding your way home. My treasures lie at each magnetic tip. So, start with number three. There are four spaces on this pedestal. You need to place a statue in each one to lift the cage and grab the trophy. You can see if I'm clicking it now, it doesn't work. And each trophy is at the magnetic tips. So, north, south, east, and west. Number two, do not rely on your sight when finding your way home. We'll talk about this when we're heading back to the middle. If you're spotted by my red gaze, I'll reclaim what you hold. This is the red gaze here. And I've got it programmed so that if you are moving while the light is on, any trophies you're holding will teleport back to where you found them. So there's a couple of methods for completing this puzzle. Uh, you can either go out one at a time and grab the north statue, bring it back, put it on the pedestal, go out, grab the south statue, bring it back, put it on the pedestal, or you can go out and pick up all four in one run if you're confident you won't get caught in the red light. Then you can bring all four back. Just do one journey, one lap of the map. And I believe in this room is a pipe for the noon puzzle. I rather cruelly hid one in the maze. So, we are here. This is north. Uh, the lights don't matter on the way out, so we're just going to go out. So I'm heading in this one straight direction. I can't really remember where to go, but as long as you keep in mind of which way is north, you should be fine. There we go, there's our first statue. And another map for reference, so we are currently up there. Um, we want to go to this one, so... I want to hug the wall to the left. And this time I don't want to be seen in the lights. Because, I think it saw me then. Yeah, let's teleport back. See this getting quite annoying. There's a, a bug in this puzzle that if you're in the light, as long as you're standing still, it doesn't register you as being in the light. So if you're ever caught, or if you if you're not going to make it through, just stop moving, and you'll be fine. So here's the next one. So we are now in this room. If I head straight down, go to the first room on the right, I believe that will be the noon puzzle.
Yep, there she blows. So the lag is the correct one for this, so we're just going to turn the valve to lock it in. Now I want to go all the way south. Which is this direction. It's another really good track, to be fair. I think one of the things I wanted to focus on in this was kind of a sensory overload kind of thing. The sound was meant to just be kind of grating, intense, loud, and then it was meant to be kind of the chaos and the anxiety you get from like laser tag, which is why I went for the red-blue color scheme. And weirdly enough, um, because of the way I've got the cell shading programmed in, it creates these really cool kind of 60s waves. Um, these are actually just where the spotlight is hitting the wall. And um, it's like so the black line is kind of the, the middle ground of the light where it fades from the intensity of the middle into a kind of middle tone thing into the darkness. So the darkness went blue, the middle tone went black, and the light itself went kind of a lighter blue. And it worked out really well. I really like it. I just saw the statue then, I don't know about you. I really hope I've not been nipped by one of these lights. So this is the third statue, and we are now at the very southern tip. So we want to go to the western one, which is kind of a hug the left wall situation again. I really hope that didn't catch me. There we go. The final statue is right here. So now, got to get back to the middle. This is where that number two on the list comes in. Something like don't rely on your sight when finding your way home. And the solution to that is that the music is originating from the center room. So if you're wearing headphones, you can hear this a lot better. If you turn, music is now in my right ear. It's now in my left ear. So you just want to head to the source of the music because that's coming from the exact center of the maze. So as long as you have it in both your ears, you are facing forwards. So I can hear that it's a little bit to my left. It's this way. I'll wait for another run. There we go. room. Really hope that didn't catch me. 
it caught me at some point. That's frustrating. I'm going to skip ahead and run through and get them all again. There we go. There we go. That was frustrating. But there we go. Trophy collected. We never have to come back down into this room ever again. <sighs> See, when I was making it, I got so good at that game, I thought, is this too easy? Have I made this too easy? But no, um, it's actually very frustrating. Uh, unless you very much take your time with it. I guess I was probably rushing because I'm filming. But, um, hmm. Yeah. We got there. So that's three trophies. Um, got the Anubis. We've got the Ben Ben, which is the spinny one. And we've got the Medjet, which was the laser tag maze. We're off to get our fourth one now, which is noon. Um, which is the middle of this lake park area. Which looks really, really cool. The trees are not mine. I wish I modelled everything in this game apart from the trees. I got these from the Unreal Store just to fill out this place because I was focusing on uh, creating the foresty environment. I've actually got some really cool sound effects in there as well. I'll turn the volume back up now that the music stopped. But yeah, we've got directional ambient noises. Fireflies, insects, rustling, air. It all comes together really well. It's very moody. And there's a <laughs> bit over here with, um, it's a sound effect of an insect coming right up to the camera and sometimes it feels like there's something actually can't hear it what's around here? Anyway, regardless, uh, you can see the lake, sort of. There's no collision on the trees. But yeah, there's the lake. And then this building is what contains the final part of the noon puzzle. There's a nice banner depicting Noon, who was, um, from what I recall, one of the primordial Egyptian gods from which many others were born. Heavily tied to water. And then we've got a little Polaroid. Gonzo in the snow. That's uh, Amigo from Cold Reset. And then T11. Yeah, another code for Thoth. Got another torch, just in case you didn't pick up the one in the office. And the final, I think, noon pipe. And the one for this is going to be... This one. And now that all those are encoded, I believe all it takes is turning this. Uh, 
and the noon light comes on the safe opens letting us take the toilet plunger slash noon trophy and um, while we're here we'll come out to the balcony as well where we'll see ooh, a picnic a hamper cloth some glasses some wine very romantic I hope uh, nothing inappropriate was going on oh 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 Oh, what's fallen out of the pocket here? It's a driving license for it. Charles Morgan. It's a bit of a looker. Interesting. So, I hope you can piece this together. So we know that in Nia's house, she tried to burn a letter talking about meeting up for a picnic signed by someone with the initial C, who also said they'd lock up early. When we went to the Aten room, Charlie had locked up early on urgent business. And now we found this ID next to evidence of a picnic we also found that note complaining that Nia was meeting up with someone in the forest lake and whatever they were doing was causing the lake to get blocked up and I think what we're hinting at here is that as our secret couple were getting busy Charlie would hang up his clothes here, stuff would fall out and clog up the uh, the water filter We've now drained the water to unclog the filter. So we just need to go and find that. See what goodies it has dispensed. Here is the water generator. Some sort of refuse pipe there. Oh, a key. Interesting. A key, most likely dropped from Charlie's clothes after he inconveniently locked up the Aten building. Putting two and two together would lead one to assume that this key unlocks the Aten building. Spoilers, it does. I mean, I don't expect anyone to uh, have figured all this out, really. It's maybe a bit too subtle. I feel like it's a bit on the nose, the way I've written it. But at the same time, no one's really going to be thinking too much about it. It's going to be like, oh, key, picnic, some dude's ID, what does this key open? Try all the doors, try Atten, oh, it opens that. If you go what I mean. So yeah, that's our fourth trophy. We are on our way to get the fifth. And then I'm trying to figure out what the sixth one is. Oh, of course, it's Thoth, the book puzzle. Um, we'll probably do that now on the way. I think we found all the clues for it. I think. I'm 
trying to think if there's any more. Got the playing card up there. Got the cabinet. Got the Polaroid of Amigo. Got the music sheet. Yeah, should be fine. Okay, so you can see we've already input three of them. Uh, next on the list will be T11. So A, B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T11. F one two A B C D E F F one two J two nine G H J two nine three four five six seven eight nine that one R four thirteen uh, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. P three, eleven. P three, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And B three four. B three. One, two, three, four. So that's all nine entered. If they are the correct ones, I should just be able to push this button and the door opens. Bosh. Cool. Let's us into the secret little study, which should have had more furniture. Here's the Thoth trophy. And then some backstory on Aten, the Aten generator. Something about the sun in the east, ask Charlie, and then some diagram for assembling something. As well as the King Ring which is a bit finicky with its click box, but you can pick it up. Just spamming it. King Ring collected. Okay. That just leaves the Aten trophy, which we've already set up all the consoles for. So we'll have a little um, <coughs> have a little look at that in a second. <sighs> so thinking about it, you could have, you need to do noon. Before you can get into Aten. You need to do Thoth before you can get the King Ring. Really, you need to do two puzzles before you can do Aten. Then you get the King Ring power-up, which um, makes a lot of the other puzzles easier. So let's have a look. Boom. Another slamming track from Martin Voskanian. So, what have we got here? I'm going to crank this down again, just so I can hear myself think. I've got a miniature version of the world map. And at various points, we've got these projector things. These are evenly 
spaced around the perimeter conveniently in the exact spots where I was entering the buttons on those consoles. And then there's a miniature version of the Aten Tower, exactly where it corresponds to on the map. And you can see with these projectors, you've got north, south, east, west. Each directional point has a little symbol. And they're all different. And basically, if you go to the console, for example, the one down there, which is just out, so we're in the Aten building here. Remember, you come out the front door, I went round through there, through there, and then there's a little tucked away console at the corner. Depending on what button you press, dictates which direction this faces, this projector. So, this projector takes light onto this back disc and projects it through the lens. So it projects it to this one. This would need to take the light to project further onwards. And you can see that they're all lined up in a nice string. So light can project from there, hits this, it comes out both ways, left and right. If it hits this way, it's projected further down, onto this, onto this, onto this, onto the sphere. Likewise, this way, down to this way, project there and there onto the sphere, and the sphere projects it back onto Aten, which powers up the tower. Now when you first find this puzzle, these projectors are not facing these directions. They're all over the place. So that's when you need to go back out into the world to find these consoles, input which direction you want each one to face so this room is where you'd make a note of that once you figure out the actual puzzle and you'd guide the light to the Aten Tower so first up we're gonna build this thing uh, I believe it's this first So as soon as we build this projector, the light will shine through. It'll register that it's all in the right place, and this vault will open, revealing the statue. So that assembly diagram that we found on the back of the notepad in the Thoth room details what order to put this projector together if you can't figure out through trial and error. The chip goes in. This thing goes in. The case cover goes on. Ooh. lot of walking I'll give you that so this final piece goes on vault opens up you can see that each projector is redirecting the lights to this orb and finally onto the Aten tower meaning that this puzzle is complete and we have the Aten Trophy. That's all six trophies. That means we can get the hell off this game. First thing we're gonna need to do is power up the King Ring.
King Ring is actually a um, major component to the final secret seventh puzzle, which involves opening the gates to get out. It's not as simple as putting all the trophies down. You also need to figure out how to open the main gate. We are almost there. Atmosphere. Get that atmosphere. Okay, cool. So we are at the base of the Atten Tower on the machine where we can change the King Ring to a powered up version. There was a document somewhere that explained that, but I, I think I skimmed over it. Deposit it in. Another ring comes out. Ooh. Come on. King ring upgraded. Where's the UI? Let's have a look. Boom. Hold right click to place beacon. Press K to smoke port. Watch this. Beacon placed. Pressing K now. Do you have headphones on for that? That's sick. Beacon moved. You ready? It's a really nice bassy sound effect I found. Anyway. Let's move on to finishing the game. What time is it? Uh, that's 10. That's not late for me, don't worry. the best way to do this yeah I'm gonna go up this way first so you remember the console in the very first room of the game where we put the Anubis statue onto and we pulled the handle and nothing happened uh, there's two more slots on that and then there's another console on the opposite side on the left side of the gate where there's three more slots so one of our statues is placed we've got five more to place uh, but three are on one side, two are on the other, so we're going to go on this side first because it doesn't matter which side you do it for the puzzle, but this side you get to watch the gate open, which is nice. So got the gate. We started in that room over there and inside this tower was the first console. Inside this tower is the second console. So we're going to do the second one first. I'm also going to place a beacon right here. So let's place our trophies, Ben Ben, Aten, and Medjed. Uh, 
And back we go to the opening room of the game. Oh my god, this is going to be a two hour video. Almost. I've made two hours of game content, isn't that crazy? Probably because you can't run. Cool. Here is the other console that we saw at the start. The Anubis statue is already on it. That's the Thoth statue and the Noon statue. And now, when you pull this with all three of them on there, get that mysterious ticking noise. Keep listening. Huh. Odd. It ticks for about 15 ticks and then stops. What you need to do to open the gate is pull this lever, and before it finishes ticking, pull the lever on the other side of the gate. That is not possible to make that journey uh, either, either direction before it clicks, unless you have the upgraded king ring. I've already got the beacon over there, so let's just wrap this thing up and get off this game. we go. Oh, it's very choppy now. There we go. The gate is open. If you were following the channel progress, um, this is as far as I took the game. I know it's the ending, but I never actually walked outside of the gate. So today we're going to do that just to wrap it up it's a cool credit sequence and if you stick around to the end I'll do a little outro and wrap the video up so um, here we go
I forgot about that. <clears throat> so this was essentially going to be um, a seemingly unrelated project to the Black Mist, which is the comic series that this is set around. And um, there's going to be this reveal at the end that they were actually linked. If I had managed to fully uh, work in the the comic pages collection and the promo for the for the first issue, then that would have been a lot more um, a lot more prevalent throughout. Yeah, it's a nice idea in, in theory. Didn't have time in the end. But yeah, so the game ends. You get a nice nice bit of music. You walk towards the light, your character dies. At least that's one interpretation. I've heard quite a few actually um, talking to people about it. Um, but what it means to me is essentially that, yeah, you, you're solving trials to prove that you're good enough to move on to the Egyptian afterlife. You're being judged at every, every stage. And if you can make it to the big ball of light, um, you move on to the next life. Don't think I got much from this. Would you describe yourself as a gamer? Yes. Uh, console mainly, sometimes PC. Uh, yes. Mist. Ribbon. Uh, abduction. Uh, missed. Three. <laughs> yes. All of the above. Yes. Um, I grabbed all of the solutions from the YouTube walkthroughs. Lol. Uh, could do with a run function. Oh, I forgot to see. Uh, overwalking. Got me stuck. My god, I forgot I did this. How did you find it? Do you have any comments? Um, probably... Noon was a puzzle involved in the pipe gears in the lake cabin. How did you find it? Do you have any comments? Those two certainly got busy. On the balcony. Thoth was the puzzle in the library with reference to the system. How do you find it? Do you have any comments? Ring was hard as shit to pick up. Medjid was the puzzle set in the maze. How did you find it? Do you have any comments? Uh, thought it was easier than it actually was. Sad face. Ben Ben was the big spinning platform puzzle. How do you find it? Do you have any comments? Choppy as all hell with OBS running. But it was fine. We got through it. Atom was the puzzle with the connecting lights. How did you find it? Do you have any comments? Skip the walking. Got the cheats. Konsu was the final puzzle of the game involving opening the gate. How did you find it? Do you have any comments? Glad to be out there. TBH. The game is currently a very raw alpha stage. Raw. So it hasn't been that rigorously tested and refined yet. Did you notice any performance issues or bugs while playing? Ugh. So many. Where to start? 
This game was made with the intention of being challenging, providing very little assistance to the player. This way it encourages exploration, investigation, and logical thinking at several points. How did you find the game's level of challenge? Hmm. A good challenge. This game is fully polished and refined, fully textured and tested. Can you see it being something you'd purchase? How much would you expect it to cost? I'd get it for maybe two pounds on itch. Nah, just playing. I'd pay like 30 to 35 for a finished version. That's me being honest. Uh, this survey is totally anonymous, however, if you'd like to provide any information about yourself or any further comments, please do so. Information helps me improve the game. If you decide to provide your name or social handle, you may well find your way into the credits of the game in a future build. Nah, it's cool. Cool. That's Bishop Chapter. It's cool coming back to it after so long. February 2022 is when I finished it. And it's now September 2023. Yeah, so over a year and a half, not quite two years. But you know, that's quite a while to be out of the game. It's cool, I mean, I, I have a, a deeper appreciation for it slightly. Uh, it, it holds up with what I remember. It's cool. No, it's cool. It's got a lot of potential. If I put more work into it, if I had more people working with me on it, it could become something really awesome. If anything, it just makes me want to jump back in and keep working on the comics. But as I mentioned earlier, I've got another project on the go that I'm happy to talk about in another video. Um, but that'll be a, a game project with a prequel comic series that I'm currently working on. Uh, maybe I'll live stream some art from it soon. I want to get some stuff up on this channel. Um, by that I mean the New Meridian 6 channel, not the Bishop Chapter channel. This is probably, if you're watching on Bishop Chapter, uh, this is probably going to be the last upload that channel sees. Uh, probably. Maybe I'll do it five years later, revisit. We'll see. Um, anyway, if you watched all the way to the end, thanks very much. Uh, I, I do appreciate it. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, then subscribe to my new Meridian 6 channel. I'll be posting a lot of stuff about my new game, a bunch of comic stuff, art live streams, various nerdy things. I've got another video currently in the works, not to do with my comics, but to do with something that's very much inspired my work and my style from when I was a kid. It's a uh, PS2 series. There's clues for that in the background. I'll say no more. But that's coming soon. Probably my next upload. Maybe not, though. Depends when I can edit it. But yeah. Thanks again for your time. Um, if you want to have a go at playing Bishop Chapter, knowing all you know, uh, the download link is around. If not, it's uh, dinkwater.itch.io. Or is it itch.io? slashed in quarter either one d-i-n-c-o-r-t-a um yeah i think that's uh that's all i need to say i'll see you in the next one bye